Hi everyone, James Mansfield here bringing you yet another video. Oh my god, you guys, it is yet another episode of Iconic Blondes. Yes! <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, it's been so long since I've done an Iconic Blonde, so I decided why not come back with a bang? Yes! We are going to be doing the most iconic anime blonde of all. Sailor Moon! Yes, we are doing Sailor Moon today. So, let me get all set up here so we can get started on this icon. <laughs> all right, we are back. I have the hair all pinned onto the head. Now, I hate to do this, but it's gonna be a quick cut for you folks, okay? Because in order to do this, we have to do a French braid in the back of the wig. So first things first, I'm gonna section off a part of the bangs because Sailor Moon famously has bangs. So we're gonna take that and ponytail that off so we don't get it mixed up with everything else. And then we're gonna be doing a French twist in the back of the wig, or a French braid actually, <laughs> to go upwards for an updo. Because with drag, that's pretty much the best option there is for doing it on wigs that's quick and easy and looks effective enough for the stage. And if you're interested in finding where I do a French braid in depth, I do it in my Selena wig recreation, the Nona Kidamas wig, yes. So you can find it there. I said that all wrong. Oh, did I? <laughs> I'm learning. I don't know what you speed it up, that's no make it on my. I always speed it up. I think it's just because I want to get it over with. Just like the words intimidate me. So it's no me queda mas. No me queda mas. No me queda mas. Is that it? I don't know. You're saying it's kind of weird. Say it again. No me queda mas. No me queda mas. So it's like, you know, it's like que. Que. And then da with a D. Da. Yeah, queda. Queda. Put an R where an R. <laughs> I feel like it's singing in the rain no, where she's trying to teach her to say can't and she's like, can't. Can't. <laughs> oh, gross. Whatever. It's in that playlist. Just find it. All right. We'll be right back. That's staying in. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Welcome back. All right. She is all French braided up in the back. We did two pigtails on the side. Sort of like our Britney Spears iconic blondes. Only this time it's in platinum blonde. Oh my gosh, both actual iconic blondes from my childhood, Britney Spears and Sailor Moon. Oh my goodness, so I had the hair all separated. I um, did one roll up right here for the side for the little like dangly fringe to cover up my sideburns. So I'm gonna show you what I did. I do this quite a bit. So I'm just gonna trim a little bit here from the excess. So that about that length. We're gonna cut more of it once it's actually curled. So just roll that up to create the little spit curls on the side. We're also gonna roll up these bangs because she has a rolled bang like Betty Page. <laughs> All right, so, Sailor Moon. Honey, when I tell you one of the most instrumental parts of my childhood was Sailor Moon, okay? I adore Sailor Moon. And I've gone into great detail about Sailor Moon in the past in some of my videos. Like, watching Sailor Moon, especially here in America, was really, really hard in the 90s at the start. Before it got on Cartoon Network and they actually started showing it, like, you had to really work to find Sailor Moon. They used to show it on basic television at like six or five in the morning sometimes, like dead slots. Like it got canceled here a couple times because it just, they didn't care about it. And they didn't see it as like being something that could tend with, you know, the usual Saturday morning fair. So like, it took a long time for Sailor Moon to like really catch on here in the States. Like other places in the world, they're like, of course, Japan, like South America, all sorts of places. It was a monstrous hit, but it hadn't caught on in the States yet. And the reason it got brought back was because, well, the fans, like it had a rabid fan base. Those few who managed to watch Sailor Moon in those wee morning hours, like created websites and everything to like petition to bring back Sailor Moon because they loved it so much. And they thought they wanted to see more. They wanted to see more dubs. So lo and behold, Signatures were collected, petitions were made, and they reinstated Sailor Moon. And later on, it got put on Toonami. Oh my God, Toonami. Is that still a thing? I should find out, because like, Toonami was instrumental in my development as a child. Like, you think of Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball Z, um, Tenchi Muyo, which you think about it now, was a pretty wildly inappropriate <laughs> anime to be brought to the States for children to consume. <laughs> It's almost like bringing Rama one half for the kids to watch. Like, how do you even do it? Or um, what was the other one? Gundam Wing. My, my sister liked that one. That was more war-based. I never really got into that one. But I always thought Hero was cute. Oh, who else? Who else? There was like a huge block of those. I remember they used to show Reboot. 
that was one I was like really into reboot, the video game one. Oh my goodness. Good times. This is like prime development years. I remember I used to rush home from school because Sailor Moon was the very first one that came out on in the block. So you had to really make it home in time. And I lived about a 25 minute walk from home. So I used to like bolt it home just to watch Sailor Moon. And I'd always catch it like five to 10 minutes in. So for a long time, I only knew the episodes from that period on. <laughs> like when I rewatched, I was like, oh, that's how that episode started. <laughs> I barely even knew it had a theme song. And like for very certain episodes, I would fake sick from school. Like the finale of season one and two, I faked sick from school just so I could watch them on like a decent time frame. Oh, okay, so I had the ponytail sectioned off. These are ready to get steamed. Just making sure it's nice and tight. For those of you who don't know who Sailor Moon is, let me just break down who it is. Now, Sailor Moon is an anime character and basically it is one of the main starters of like the magical girl trope as far as like, you know, in the television and things go. She's probably one of the most popular variations of that. Where basically Sailor Moon is Usagi in Japan, but in America, I knew her as Serena from the English dubs, the Deke dubs as they call it. And she is a schoolgirl who one day finds out from a talking cat that she is this warrior from the moon. And her whole life is flipped upside down and she has to like find all these different girls who are also moon warriors. And they just have to have like sailor costumes. Like, can you really explain it? It makes absolutely no sense, but I promise you it is so engaging. <laughs> like, you'll get sucked in and it's so girly and so fun. I think that's also one of the things I liked about it too. I'm just wrapping our pigtails right now to cover that up because we have to make buns. That's another thing. Like she had what they called meatball head. <laughs> that was one of her nicknames. And it was literally just two big unexplained buns in her hair, like pigtails with big buns on the side, which I always tried to fathom what exactly was that? Like, what is this hairstyle? Like for a long time, I thought it's like, maybe she just like pinches the like ponytail, the pigtails and just pulls it out. Cause I've seen girls do that before and just fans it out to make like a little bump it on each side. Like it was interesting. I never quite figured out exactly what it was. If somebody does know, let me know what they're supposed to be. Are they just buns? Oh yes, but back to my story. Yes, Sailor Moon. Yeah, essentially she is the, you know, pinnacle of the magical girl. A girl who's an everyday child that gets their life turned around and they find out they're this amazing person they never knew they were. And what I liked about Sailor Moon, I think especially as a little gay kid growing up who wasn't the smartest and had a rough time in school, I liked that she wasn't perfect. And I kind of liked that, you know, Serena, I'm just gonna call her Serena because that's how I knew her. Usagi, Serena. I liked about her is that she was kind of a crybaby. She was very emotional. She would get mad easily. She would make mistakes. She was a bad student and got like made fun of constantly for it. And like, she never gave up about it though. Like she always tried and she would fail too. Like, I think I liked that about Sailor Moon is just like, especially in the English dubs in the beginning, they'd always have like these little lessons to like cheer you up. And like as a little gay kid, I remember watching those and it really like would hit home for me. I don't know why, like you look back at it, they're so corny, but I don't know. I felt like it was something that really gave me a strong moral code growing up. And I really liked Sailor Moon for that. It was like, no matter what, she always was there for friends and for people. She didn't throw people away. You try your hardest to see the good in people, even if they treat you like that, you know? Which oftentimes in that show, People treated her like garbage all the time, but if they were in trouble, she'd help. All right, now I just plucked a little section of hair so we could start our pigtail buns. We're just gonna jack this up to create little beehives. Cause the vision I have for this, I'm not going for a full on like accurate anime recreation because there's a million of those out there and they're done so beautifully that I don't even wanna throw my hat in that race. I wanna do my own spin on it, like a drag spin, almost like what it could possibly look like in real life if you're trying to create something that's more close to life, not so much a cartoon come to life. Cause that's been done a lot and people have done them so beautifully. Like that's not really my jam. I don't wanna do cosplay hair, not knocking it. It's just not me. You can definitely find a lot of those videos out here. But we're just creating our beehives right here. Good starting. And you can already start seeing the hairstyle take shape. Like you can see little 
bulb happening and the hair holding down and the hair falling down. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna beehive this one up quick and I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, now I did one side off of camera and I also steamed these roll ups. So we're gonna let those dry for a little bit as we work on this section here. Now, what I did was I parted this a little bit here just to keep it out of the way. So I'm just gonna grab a little clippy clip and clip her out of the way for now. Now, I love Sailor Moon for the fact that like, for being a show that came out in the very, very early 90s, it was super ahead of its time, especially in like ways that you wouldn't expect. Like it was super, super, super queer friendly. They had queer characters on Sailor Moon long before any other anime had that. And honestly, long before a lot of TV shows had that. They had lesbian characters, trans characters, queer characters. They didn't shy away from it. Gay characters, Zoysite. But it was always so fascinating. And like you look at, especially season two, they were inspired in the way they did their artwork. Like a lot of the characters, the costumes the villains are wearing, they're wearing like Terry Mugler. And like super well-known designers were like influences in the way they designed some of the characters and their clothes. Like so cool. And like the fact that they're like coded with that kind of stuff is super interesting to me. Like if you look at um, the character I know her as Catsy in the American dub, She's wearing Terry Mugler, like full on. <laughs> like, it is something right out the runway. And like a lot of the villainesses wore that too. Like it's so cool. And like you think about it, and you look at those fashions and see them walking down the runway, like why wouldn't the super villain wear that? <laughs> and recently, another YouTuber has actually unearthed the unaired original American pilot. Because originally Sailor Moon, the dubs, was not the intended plan. Like they were planning to bring it to America and just completely redo the series in almost like a He-Man kind of style. Like it looked, I watched it and it is awful. <laughs> like it's a bad show. And I'm glad we got what we got because it would have been horrible. But it's fascinating to see like what these people thought of this TV show. Like clearly grown men that had seen this and took the bare minimum of it and with the least bit of understanding about what the TV show actually was, tried to give it the Americanized treatment and it just didn't work. Like had they really like stuck more to the source material, some of the changes they did could have really worked and been interesting. Like I like that they made a lot of the girls multiracial and like they diversified the cast a lot. And you know, hopefully, you know, down the line, people will take some of those elements and redo Sailor Moon. Cause I think it really could be palatable to that kind of format where you can take certain characters and switch it up, diversify the cast even more and just tell the same story. But yeah, it's like, I found it so fascinating. They like nicknamed that Saban Moon because of the studio that was producing it. And like, you look at some of the art stills and everything, it looked bad. <laughs> like, oh yeah, it was so Americanized and so just like, you could tell it was a product of grown men that just had no understanding of the source material. And it seemed like no desire to even get to know the source material. But like, okay, well this, this and that, and we'll just have those kind of elements there and just do whatever with it. But yeah, I could see why no one went for it. Like I could see why producers saw this and thought, no, we'll pass. But what's so cool is like Sailor Moon is super influential. When you think of like how many TV shows after that kind of mopped Sailor Moon's aesthetic and concept and tropes that they use for the episodes, like it's a formula that works. And like Sailor Moon's remained as popular as it did and has been redone so many different times because it just works. You can't really explain it. Simple concept, you know. Magical girl finds out she's, you know, destined for more than just her mundane, boring school life. Like, you can understand, like, why this was so fascinating and so appealing, and especially, like, queer kids, especially, we really clung to it. Because a lot of times, especially when I was growing up, you were just looking for an escape anywhere. And more than anyone, I always could identify with Sailor Moon because I like the fact that she wasn't perfect. And like, despite the fact that like, she could be an asshole and she could be kind of selfish, but at the end of the day, she always did the right thing. And even if it sucked or it didn't benefit her, she still would do the right thing. All right, now we're just going to beehive up this bun. Super simple. I showed y'all how to do this when I did my Wilma Flintstone hairdo. It's similar to that. We're just going to bat it down to create a nest and then spin around the brush to create a beehive. This is the classic, classic, classic beehive. That's how they used to do it old school, honey. Swirl your brush around and wrap it through. Wrap it around. And we're almost 
done, honestly, which is kind of cool. I actually did this a lot faster than I thought. Maybe it just had this hairstyle burning inside of me that I just wanted to recreate it. <laughs> It'd be like that sometimes. Like it really finished up really quickly. And I think it's so pretty, especially like the little ringlet curls on the side. Now let's just see if these are dry. Yes, they are. Just trim them a little bit because I don't need them too crazy long. All right, so she's looking pretty cute so far. I might have to recurl this one a little bit, but other than that, she's pretty accurate. It's looking almost more true to life. That's the way I wanted. I didn't want it to be too, 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 like, cartoony. Let's do our bang. Y'all know I love me this kind of bang. Just tease it down. Nice, voluminous face framing bang. <laughs> I gotta curl this little side bit again, but it, again, looking at it, it's cute. It's like <laughs> Sailor Moon meets Britney Spears. <laughs> I'm kind of obsessed. It's like 60s Sailor Moon Britney Spears. I love it. Okay, I think this is gonna be the final look. I just gotta recurl this little curly cue on the side, but she's ready to go. So I'll be right back with the final results. <laughs> Welcome back. This is the final result. Oh my God, I'm kind of obsessed. It's like, <laughs> I look like a badass little girl. <laughs> I knew plenty of little girls that ran around with hairstyles like this. This is so cute. Oh my God. Anytime I wear a hairstyle like this, like pigtails on me automatically just look juvenile and can get a little bit like bad seed really quickly. So <laughs> I'm not mad at it. I'm not. I'm not. I think it's really cute. I wish I had like a Sailor Moon outfit because that would really like tie everything together. But I do like this wig. I think it came out really well. And like it's a nice interpretation, my interpretation of Sailor Moon's hair. The drag version. Yes. <laughs> it is so sassy. I love it. Oh my goodness. Now, before I go, I have to take a moment. A Ven moment where I thank everyone who's tipped me on Venmo. I would like to thank Brandon. Sergio, and as well as a PayPal money from Ames. Thank you, Ames. And I also have a YouTube heart on from Shaners, Carl Brain, Jacob J. Tequila, Rod, Tumaz, and two from Vanessa Hardy. Oh my gosh, you all have such heart ons for me. <laughs> okay, it never gets old. And if you are so confused as to what that is, YouTube added a brand new feature where you can give a heart thanks. Yes. It's right down there, just look for it. Now this was so much fun to do. I can't believe I finally got Sailor Moon done. She is in the canon, iconic blondes, Sailor Moon. I love it. And if these ponytails are a little too short for you, I like them this length because it's manageable. But if you want longer, just add some extensions and bam girl, or like two ponytail pieces, just clip them right here. Yes, oh my gosh. <laughs> now I'm having ideas. Anyways, anyways, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, adios. Now hit the outro! <laughs> Click here and watch me try out the Trixie X Juno Birch Collection. Or see me recreate the Bob's Purse First Impressions wig only in human hair. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it in the name of the moon, I will punish you. So click it.